my baby. Hi, hi. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, go behind me now. <sighs> it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a long while since I made a talking video. Should I look in the lens or should I look at the viewfinder? <laughs> so, I, as everyone knows at this point, because I made it very obvious, I went to Korea this year in July and it was an amazing experience. I can't even begin to, well, I can't begin to describe it because I, I went there with not many expectations, so it's not to say I thought it was going to be crap, I just went there without my hopes held really high. And it was warm, almost as hot as it is right now. <laughs> it was really, really hot. Um, so I think it was that combined with the fact that um, I knew the language a little bit. <laughs> and that I was really familiar with the culture, um, that it felt like home. It felt a lot like home, and I just absolutely fell head over heels for the city, Seoul. We, we only stayed in Seoul, we didn't go um, to any other places. That's next on the list. <laughs> I'm making plans to go next year with my best friend, and I'm just... Penny, why? <laughs> She's gone under my bed. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going with Becca, best friend in the whole world. And I hope that I can take her to everywhere. I want to stay in Seoul for a little bit. I also want to go to Gyeongju. I want to go to Busan and Jeju and maybe one of the little islands on the, the west coast or something like that. I don't know, there's just so many things to do. Um, and th now that I have a job, I can save up a lot faster to go on trips that will make me very, very happy. Since I'm going back and I went and, you know, I thought that I could do a little Q&A about the country and where I stayed, where I went, and just any questions people had about traveling there or traveling in Korea or like the culture and stuff like that from a foreigner's perspective. I got a couple of questions. Hello. I'm thinking about going to Korea next summer. It's something that's been on my mind for a while now. I know there must be a lot of beautiful, beautiful places to visit, but what are the top 10 you'd recommend? Okay, so you say summer is monsoon season. <laughs> So I'd recommend lots of indoor activities. You can go to Latte World. Um, we didn't go too deep into the whole Latte World thing. I know they have an indoor theme park. You can go up the North Seoul Tower, which I really, really, really recommend. Um, that's like the moment I knew that I really, really love this city. I am starting to cry. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Kidding. I was holding it back a lot. Where is it? Namsan Tower. I really don't know. This is something I feel really stupid about. I don't know if it's North Road Tower or Namsan Tower. I think it's both because it's situated in Namsan Park. Anyway, whatever. Top 10. Top 10, top 10. Where did we go? The Cat Cafe is really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> dog cafe which is called Bauhaus. If I'm correct, I think that's in Hongdae. <laughs> I had a great time there. They have a section for little dogs and they have a section for big dogs. It was about 15 US to get in and you get a free drink. Um, I had a hot chocolate and I think Marcella had a tea or something, um, which is a steal. I just need to talk about this for a second. Tea in Korea is so expensive. Oh jeez. That's where most of the money went. It's a bit mental. <laughs> I recommend that you go to as many palaces as you, as you can because <laughs> they're all different and they're all beautiful in their own ways. Also, the National Museum of Korea is extensive. I can't stress enough how much you should go there. And just by chance, where we went, they had some people playing music. I mean, everyone knows music is my favorite thing in the entire world. Go 
for the home day. Go and look at all the street performances. How much Korean do you have to speak to get by? Do you have to be fluent or are there just certain phrases that you have to know? I say you have to be able to read it. You're gonna go into restaurants, like what we did, we just walked around. We went into any restaurant that looked inviting and had a great menu. Um, but the thing is, most of the venues that you'll find in these authentic Korean restaurants um, are written entirely in Hangul. I know, I know, it's very exciting, isn't it? It's very exciting. So learn how to read it um, and learn some menu items first. Uh, and then I recommend learning to speak some things like, hello, um, I'll have this please. Um, which is like item to sale. It's really not that hard to learn. Give yourself a couple of weeks and you'll be ready to go. Really? Dog? Really? Mm -hmm. Shush! Relax! It's mm -hmm. not a big deal. Uh, learn what the word for passport is. I didn't know what that was. I actually can't remember what it is off, off the top of my head right now, but when you go in stores and um, you're shopping for things or if you happen to be like in a duty-free store. People behind the counters might ask you if you have a passport so you can get it duty-free. That was a really embarrassing experience. No. <laughs> that was a really embarrassing experience. Changing position so you can see how shiny I am. What do you like most about Korea? What is your favorite dish? That's a really hard question. The thing that really caught me was the, all the traditional architecture just in and amongst all of the like hyper modern, really, really contemporary buildings from like, you know, an artistic point of view. Especially since I really thought that Seoul specifically was going to be really, really built up. I was kind of picturing New York and it's so not like in New York. There are bits of Seoul that really don't feel like you're in the city. That's two things. It's the architecture and it's the fact that it doesn't feel like a city most of the time. What's my favorite dish? I can't get over the amount of food that you get when you go here. It's a bit, it's insane because you order a main dish and then they bring all the banchan also and put it on the table and that has like rice and kimchi and radish and pickled radish and bean sprouts kimchi john. <laughs> that was my favorite thing by far and I'll put a picture there of the enormous kimchi john that I ordered. I got a couple of questions from one of my friends on Twitter. How easy or difficult was it to get around Korea? Definitely easy. The first thing we did when we got to the airport in Incheon, we went to get a T-Money card. I was really scared to get at first, because I think being a West Indian person, we don't have subways or you know the metro, same thing. We don't have like an underground, we don't do trains and things like that. So all these things are really familiar. Don't mind, I lived in England for three years. It was really, really easy to travel around Korea. The subway is the best way to go, in my opinion, um, because it's cheap and it's extremely quick and very easy. All the lines are color coded. You see all the lines, neighbor maps has the subway lines on it. We mainly stayed on this Orange Line Neighbor Maps is free and it's extremely helpful to choose the subway over a taxi because, of course, obviously, not all taxi people speak English if English is your first language. I mean, we did the taxi thing once, which was okay because um, we got by and actually the taxi man was really, really nice. Um, I should tell you about the prices. We took the subway everywhere. We lost lots of back and forths and at the end of the day that would cost us 4,000 won. Ish, maybe like 4,500 for US dollars for an entire day and we were staying in Bukchon and we'd be like going to Gangnam and then going back up and then going back. What was the weather like? Really rainy for the majority of the time but that, that's it's okay because the rain doesn't stop anyone in Korea. It was fine we just did lots of indoor activities and even when we had to walk around we had really good umbrellas and I made the great decision. <laughs> to wear sandals because they dry out really quickly. Like, yeah, your feet get wet. You'll just have to get used to that. Your whole legs will get wet. I got that advice from Carrie Cakes. Street food or restaurants? Um, I didn't really do much of the street food thing only because I'm suspicious I might have a shellfish allergy. You'll find that a lot of things do have like shrimp in it. So all I can say is, yeah, restaurants. I don't know, just walking around, you find a lot of really great, you know, small restaurants just on the side of the road or like hidden away in an alley that are just so worth it and so affordable. How did you prepare yourself for the culture shock? 
Did you read up a lot and do research on Korean culture as a whole or did you just wing it? I'm not really one to wing it. Uh, no, I did a lot of research on Korean culture. I really didn't want to go in here and offend people. I'll show you the books that I have, um, which I'm ashamed to say are written by foreigners. I would prefer to have one written by a Korean person. Um, but I tried to make up for that by watching YouTube videos made by Korean people talking about Korea. This is quite an informative book. It talks a lot about politics though, so I'm actually now I'm well read on Korean politics and I don't even know uh, that much history about Beijing politics, which is fantastic. This is really good. This guy actually lives in Korea, um, which is why I trust this a bit more. Uh, and um, I think he's married to a Korean lady as well. I don't know. Trust this guy. Trust the new Korean. This is like a great um, I say brief, it's quite a big book, but it, it's true, it is like a brief um, insight into lo loads of aspects of the culture. It's business, history, and people of South Korea. Yeah, that's it, that's what I meant to say. There wasn't a lot of culture shock. I think the only thing that like I had to be mindful of was actually what I'm doing right now. Coming from a Caribbean country, if it's hot and you just wear a spaghetti strap, even if they're at your work, you can wear, or at least where I work, I can wear a spaghetti strap and some light jeans, but over there it's more like you can show your legs, but no... I mean, the shoulders is getting a little bit more... Uh, it's more acceptable nowadays. Um, I see a lot of actual Korean people going around with their shoulders out in summer. But just to be safe, I did lots of this. Lots of t-shirts. Lots of legs. Don't wear any poom poom shorts in a Buddhist temple. With that, I conclude the q and I hope this was helpful to anyone that might want to go there. If you have any more questions, you can leave it in the comment section down below. Or you can go to my Tumblr. Uh, if you're here from my Tumblr, then you know where it is, but I'm not putting that up. Or you can go to my Instagram or my Twitter, and you can ask me whatever you want. Bye!